Alhamdulillah Aladhi arsala rasuluhu bil huda wa deen al-haq li yadhrahu ala deen kullihi wa kafa billahi shahidan wa ashadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam amma ba'd Continuing on in our dars or our lesson our lessons about aqeedah to wasatiyah this is the second lesson and I want to correct and clarify a couple of things I mentioned uh, in the previous dars. In the previous dars I said the Prophet Sallallahu uncle, I said Abdul Muttalib, when in fact it is Abu Talib. Uh, and we were speaking in reference to Abu Talib refusing the call of Islam and that the Prophet Sallallahu was unable to uh, guide his heart. That Those affairs are uh, left for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as we mentioned the guidance is of two types the first type as Sheikh Salim bin Fawzan mentioned he said Al-Hadi bima'na uh, or Al-Huda Huda bima'na Al-Dalala wal bayan that the guidance of showing the correct path and clarifying the path and the second type of guidance, al huda bi ma'na tawfiq wa ilham. The second type is the type of guidance in which a person has been blessed with acceptance. So, for example, you can show someone uh, the straight path. You can show someone Islam. You can call them. You can say, "Hey, Islam is like this. Uh, Islam is uh, a mo- is the." monotheistic religion, pure monotheism. We worship only Allah alone. We don't worship any other gods. We don't think he has a son or a daughter. You can give them da'wah and you can show them with good manners. You can have good speech uh, and, and remind them. That would be the hidayah of the of Dilala, you know, of showing uh, this person that guidance. As far as them accepting the haq, accepting the truth of Islam, that this is only by the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that and that type of guidance is a tawfiq uh, wal ilham so that type of guidance is reserved only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the result of a person accepting guidance or accepting advice you can only show the the tariq and this was the uh, guidance of the messengers alayhim after salatu wa salam of dilala wa bayan that they were showing and clarifying the truth uh, for the, for for people as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa innaka la tahdi ila sirat mustaqim and verily you guide to the straight path ila sirat mustaqim and we mentioned some things and i just want to quickly give us a little bit more depth about some very important things. One of the things we mentioned uh, when Shaykh al-Islam began in his introduction, he said, وَشَرُوا إِنْ لَا إِلَهِ اللَّهِ وَحْدَهُ لَا شَرِيكَ لَا إِكْرَارٍ وَتَوْحِيدٍ وَأَشْهَدُوا وَأَشْهَدُوا أَنَّ مُحَمَّدٍ عَبْدُهُ وَرَسُولُهُ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَعَلَىٰ آلِهِ وَصَحْبِهِ وَسَلَّمْ تَسْلِيمٍ مَزِيدًا So Shaykh al-Islam here, he began with something which is incredibly important and that's the miftal jannah that's the key to paradise when we bear witness that there is no god worthy of worship except allah and that muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam was the last messenger of allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam this is incredibly important why is this so important as all of this all muslims this is ma'lum min ad-din bi this is something every muslim should know this however many people who utter the shahada do not know the meaning some of them to the extent that they are not even muslim and some of them to the extent meaning because they don't practice the shahada at all, they worship graves, they supplicate to the dead, they supplicate to their uh, sheikhs and so forth and their marid and uh, you know all various forms of bid'ah and kufr, wazandaka and others maybe they might have the excuse of ignorance you know maybe no one has ever taught them and there's no people of knowledge in their place of residence or their balad and this is reserved between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Ahl sunnah 
we make judgments by what is apparent to us. So if we see someone worship in a grave, then we believe, we hold that they are disbelievers, that they have left the fold of Islam, and that they are, they require bayan, they require for us to clarify for them that no, Islam is free from grave worship, and Islam frees you from grave worship, and that in fact, all of your worship uh, should be directed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that supplication should not be made to our, our sheikhs, or the dead saints, or the, the our, our, our fathers, or our salaf, but rather the supplication is to Allah because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let us know that dua is ibadah. And the Prophet wasallam said, alayhi salatu wasalam in a sahih hadith, fi tirmidhi, qala dua hu ibadah. Alayhi salatu wasalam, that supplication is ibadah. So this lets us know the importance and makana and manzila of the shahada and that the shahada is the miftal jannah. But as some of the salaf used to say that with that miftah, that key to jannah, every key has teeth. And those teeth are the shurut or the conditions for the shahada. So it's very important that every Muslim understands the shahada uh, and what it means to bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah alone and He has no partners and that this forms monotheism and affirming that monotheism and then bearing witness that Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was his slave and messenger meaning that we don't raise the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam above his position we don't worship him as the christians worshiped uh, fell into the worship of Jesus alayhi salatu wasallam and as many other communities and many amongst the ummah have fallen into uh, raising the status of the Prophet Sallallahu and others. They worship, if you go to Ethiopia, you'll find a group uh, that, they, that actually worship Najashi. You'll find this, this is well known. They go to the place where he's buried, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, as he was a tabi'i, uh, Allah yarhamahu, and they make tawaf around his grave, they supplicate to his grave, and they take so much pride in the fact that he uh, was uh, from their their people, and that he was a tabi'i, that he knew Sahaba, radiAllahu ta'ala anhu majma'in, and that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam prayed uh, salat al ghaib the janaza, uh, the janaza uh, over him, even though he was in another belad. That the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam made salat al ghaib alayhi salatu wasalam. So knowing and understanding the meaning of the shahadatain is imperative for every Muslim. The other thing I wanted to give us a little bit more uh, detail about is the importance of also of what it means to make salat when we say the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when we say alayhi salatu wasalam or uh, and, and so forth when we say wa sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam wa sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah he says he mentions about that uh, here that in his Majmu'a Fatawa he said or actually this isn't the statement of Shaykh al-Islam it's a paraphrase of his statement that the shahada uh, and after mentioning the shahada in Tawheed that the shahada that the Prophet wasallam was the last uh, messenger wasalam, and his risala meaning his message that he came with and the ubudiyya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all this ta'zim all this uh, these important matters he said wa tashhadu وَتَشَاهُدْ مَشْرُوعُ فِي الْخُطْبِ وَالثَّنَاءَ عَلَى اللَّهِ تَعَالَى وَذَلِكَ لِأَنَّ التَّوْحِيدِ أَصْلَ الْإِيمَانِ وَكَلَامْ فَارَكْ بَيْنَ أَهْلَ الْجَنَّةِ وَأَهْلَ النَّارِ وَهُوَ ثَمِنَ الْجَنَّةِ وَلَا يُصِحْ إِسْلَامْ أَهَدْ إِلَّا بِهِ That it's important that we know that of course we have to have, we have to believe in the shahada we have to utter the shahada we have to practice the shahada and this is the uh, the testimony of the people of paradise and Tawheed is the asal, it's the foundation of the religion. But as far as uh, the statement about bearing witness 
He said, وَأَمَّا الصَّلَاةَ عَلَى نَبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ فَهِيَ السُّوَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى أَنْ يُثْنِي عَلَى رُسُولِهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم. This is the point I wanted to make. That when we say salatu wa salam, alayhi salatu wa salam, for the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, that this is in fact a type of supplication to Allah. That we are supplicating to Allah, we are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty, to praise the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Praise not in, as in hamd, because in Arabic they make a distinction uh, between uh, hamd, which is praise, and thana, which is praise. We can make thana on one another, but we don't generally the hamd. This is reserved for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this type of praise. And so making salat or salam ala nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam this is asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to praise, to make thana on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam you know we're asking Allah to increase his barakah, increase his his blessings and to وَأَنْ يَذْهَرَ فَضْلُهُ وَشَرْفُهُ And also for Allah to make apparent the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam his his um his fadl, his 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 greatness, and his sharf, meaning his his uh, his position and his his esteem and his greatness, that all of these and 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 to and for Allah subhanahu wa taala to bless him and to make him uh, closer to him, and this is what it means for salat ala Allahi ala Rasulihi. He a thanaohu subhanahu alayhi wa izharahu li fadlihi wa sharfuhu wa iradata taqreemihi wa taqreebihi. So all of this is just in reference to when we make salat on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it is in fact we are asking our Lord, the Almighty, the creator of the heavens and earth, the only one worthy of worship, uh, the only one uh, who we direct all of our praises to, to uh, raise the makan and, uh, of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and to uh, that Allah subhanahu wa taala increase the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam being mentioned and his 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 great status alayhi salatu wasalam. Then the Shaykh said, "Amma ba'd, fahadha al-tiqad al-firqa al-najiyat al-mansura ila qiyam al-sa'a ahl al-sunnati wal-jama'a." So Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah taala, he said, "Then this is the itqad, the creed of the saved, uh, the successful and saved group." until the day of judgment and we mentioned what that means yesterday and then he said after that he said ahl sunnati wal jama'a meaning that they are taifatul mansura ahl sunnati wal jama'a they are the taifa mansura they are the ones who bi idnillah ta'ala are saved from the hellfire now when we say that we for uh, uh, we say that we're from Ahl Sunnah, meaning that we hold the creed of Ahl Sunnah, and we try to follow the madhab and the understanding and the minhaj of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah and our understanding and practice of Islam. That is not a tazkiyah, saying that we are going to Jannah. So that's very important for us to understand, and many people misunderstand, and they accuse uh, people from Ahl Sunnah, they accuse the Salafiyin, they accuse people uh, who uh, adhe- try to adhere to the madhab of the salaf, they accuse them of making tazkiyat al-nafs. So if a person is saying that they are salafi or they are ahl sunnah, they represent ahl sunnah and so forth, from the, in a way in which they are making tazkiyah for themselves, they are in fact kind of praising themselves and out of pride and, and, and saying that they are the ones that are saved, then this is a mistake. And this is something Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, in, his, in, in the Qur'an has spoken against. It's spoken against and this is madmoon, this is sinful. So we don't want to be, uh, as the ulama mentioned, to make tizqiyah to nafs. But in fact we want to humble ourselves at all, all times. When we say that we're from Ahlul Sunnah, meaning that th- that's what we strive to adhere to. We try to, to, to adhere to that itqad. And some of the important things we want to mention, as we mentioned yesterday, وَمَقْصُودْ مِنْ إِطْلَاقَ السُنَّةِ هُنَا 
معناها اصطلاحي وهو شمولها للاسلام كاملا so what we mean by the sunnah when we say ahl sunnah wal jama'ah we are referring to the sunnah meaning islam in totality and the most befitting statement is the statement we mentioned yesterday the statement of imam babahari rahimahullah ta'ala i'lam anna al-islam huwa sunnah wa sunnatu hi al-islam wa la yakum ahadun wa la yakum ahad illa bil akhir فمن فمن السنة لزوم الجماعة ومن رغب غير الجماعة وفارقها فقد خلى رب ربقه أو ربق ربقه الإسلام من عنقه وكان ضال مضل. so uh, Imam Babahari said in a most befitting statement about the Sunnah of what it means he said the Sunnah he said no Verily that Islam is the Sunnah and the Sunnah is Islam. And one, uh, you can't have one without the other. Because they the, they're the same. And from the Sunnah is adhering to the Jama'ah, the main body of Muslims. So whoever desires other than the Jama'ah, other than the main body of Muslims, and they divide and split from the Muslims, then they have uh, freed themselves, their necks, from the, the bonds, if so to speak, or freed themselves from Islam. They've divided themselves, they separated themselves from Islam. Uh, and they are misguided, and they are people who misguide. So this is a very important statement of Imam Babahari that he mentioned in Shara Sunnah about the importance of the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, and that it is one, and that Ahlul Sunnah, Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah, they are those people who adhere to Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and they stick to the main body of Muslims. They don't separate themselves and try to distinguish themselves, except that they distinguish themselves by adhering to the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam more than others. That's what they strive to do. They strive to have the correct aqidah. They strive to have the correct minhaj. They strive to practice and have good manners better than others. That's how they distinguish themselves. But they don't distinguish themselves like the Jews who believe that they are the saved ones and that they and everyone else is destroyed and they treat others in such a way if you know your brother is misguided if you know your sister is misguided then from the sunnah and from the way the madhab of the salaf al-salih is having good manners and calling them away from that misguidance correcting them with amr bi ma'ruf wa nahi al munkar so this uh, statement of imam babahari illustrates for us the importance that islam and the sunnah are one and we'll continue on uh, as it is from the sunnah when we hear the adhan to respond to the adhan the call to prayer and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and in our next sitting we'll continue on to talk about a little bit more about the sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, and its importance of his, in Islam and some of the statements of the salaf wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam